Good to go. Well, good afternoon, everybody. We're here to uh, talk a little, a little about the issue that's come up over the last week concerning uh, automatic voter registration here in Illinois. My name is Tim Butler. I'm a state representative from the 87th district. I live here in Springfield. Uh, with me today, we've got Congressman Rodney Davis uh, from Taylorville, uh, Leader Dan Brady, uh, Leader C.D. Davidsmeyer, uh, Leader Avery Bourne, uh, Representative Mike Murphy from Springfield, and Senator Steve McClure from Springfield as well. Uh, I just want to begin by saying this is a critical time uh, in the election cycle that we have here in Illinois. We begin voting in uh, early voting for the primary election on February 6th, just two, less than two weeks away. Uh, and this situation is something that uh, erodes the confidence in the electoral system that we have here in Illinois. Um, this, is a, this is as large an issue uh, as we've seen with the Russian hacking that we had with the State Board of Elections uh, uh, a few years ago, uh, or any of the other outside interference that we had with our elections. The difference with this is this is a self-inflicted issue to the state of Illinois that we've, they've put upon ourselves. And I want to be very clear, we're not alleging fraud or anything like that. In fact, the people who, these are people that were in Illinois legally, uh, they were doing the right thing by identifying themselves as non-citizens, and it was the state that did not protect them. In fact, it was completely the Secretary of State's office fault for putting them at risk. They put well-intentioned, well-intentioned, legal non-citizens at risk and that office did so for almost 18 months. Uh, there was a statement from Secretary White uh, on September 24th of 2018, so uh, four months after this, this program began. Uh, as reported in the Daily Line, Secretary said, it is going very well in regards to automatic voter registration. But my number one priority is to ensure we are protecting the integrity of the election process. Well, that certainly did not happen here. Uh, as for our request, the five members of the House Executive Committee to hold a hearing with the Executive Committee, we made that request at 8 a.m. on Monday morning. We have yet to hear uh, a response from the Speaker's Office when it comes to our request for a hearing. Additionally, uh, Representative Wheeler, Keith Wheeler, who's the Republican spokesperson on the Executive Committee, uh, reached out to Chairman uh, uh, Welch, Chris Welch, uh, and has yet to have a response from Chairman Welch as well. Uh, and just a reminder, uh, this goes in line with the uh, summary um, turning down of Leader Durkin's request of a hearing uh, a few weeks ago when it came to investigations uh, regarding the uh, rape in Champaign and ghost payrolling. Uh, those requests for hearings were turned down by the Speaker as well. Um, even though the numbers are low in this situation, as has been reported and has been identified by, by the Secretary of State's office, uh, compared to the overall numbers of automatic voter registrations in the state, this situation cannot be diminished. It should not be diminished. No one person, no one person is too many. One person is too many to fall into the trap that they did with this. The standard for AVR should be zero percent failure, and that did not happen here. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, my good friend Congressman Rodney Davis uh, for some remarks as well. Uh, thank you, Representative Butler, and thanks to all uh, my friends and, uh, and uh, colleagues here today. Uh, this is uh, not a press conference I think any of us wanted to be at today, but I'm glad I'm here, and I, I want to address some of the federal issues. Um, as you know, uh, I'm the ranking member of the House Administration Committee. It's a committee in Congress in the House of Representatives that oversees our elections at the federal level. Uh, this issue that we're here to talk about today is, is deeply concerning to me. Uh, I do not believe that the federal government should overstep into our states who have the sole responsibility of administering our elections. Uh, but the issue we're here to talk about today is deeply concerning, even to us at the federal level. Uh, I have, in, in response to that, uh, I've actually planned a congressional listening session uh, that will commence, and I hope the colleagues standing behind me can join me at that, uh, to talk about automatic voter registration to get an idea of how the program is being administered in states like Illinois and how we can avoid what has happened this week and what, is, what has come to light this week but happened much sooner. Uh, I've invited, uh, through a letter sent yesterday to Secretary of State White, I've invited his office to participate in this congressional listening session along with the Illinois State Board of Elections. And we hope to get answers. We hope by that time uh, they'll be able to look into the processes that caused this issue that caused the concern, uh, but let's, let's also make sure that we fix it before we move into the next legislative session and firmly before we move into the next election season. Um, I'm not an opponent of automatic voter registration, 
But what has happened in Washington since Illinois implemented automatic, automatic voter registration is a push through a bill call, called H.R. 1 that would create an AVR program nationwide. And what we're seeing in states like Illinois that have gone through motor voter decades ago, that there are still problems when it comes to implementation that need to be corrected. Now imagine a state like North Dakota. North Dakota has no voter registration. If you prove on election day that you live in the state of North Dakota, you can walk into a polling place and you can vote. How are they going to implement a program like AVR if states like Illinois have problems like everybody here is going to talk about? When you don't even have a registration system in the state of North Dakota, it just goes to point out that not every solution that comes up in a legislator's mind, be it at the federal level or even the state level, you know, is a good idea unless you talk through implementation. And I got to give the Secretary of State some credit. They're working to figure out what happened. They're working to figure out how to fix it because we can't have a situation like this before the next election. But let's take this into consideration too. The next time we hear great ideas, let's make sure we have a good plan to put them into action so that we don't have events like this because really the ones who are most affected are not us as elected officials. It's those individuals who were erroneously categorized in a, certain, in a certain way by a government computer system that in some cases could impact their ability to still remain in this country. So I do want to say thank you also to the State Board of Elections. They've been a great uh, partner working with us when it comes to addressing election issues at the federal level. And as a matter of fact, um, their Cyber Navigator program is something that's leading the way when it comes to, uh, when it comes to cyber security protection in this country and they're doing a great job and this is an issue that I'd hope they wouldn't have to deal with but today they are and let's make sure we get it fixed and I'm proud to introduce uh, my good friend and a leader in the house and my state representative Avery Bourne. Thank you I'm Avery Bourne I represent the 95th district in Illinois um, and I think today we need to start the discussion about suspending the automatic voter registration program until we know for certain that this is being implemented correctly. We've heard about issues at the Secretary of State. There were other agencies in the automatic voter registration law that were called on implementing this. It's our understanding that some of the agencies have and some have not. Um, this was supposed to be implemented last July. So we know that there have been issues with implementation, but we don't know for certain if they're having the same issues that we've heard at the Secretary of State. And so until we know that this is being implemented correctly, um, we need to suspend AVR and get the answers that we called on, that Representative Butler was called on in a committee hearing, um, and to make sure that, especially with the upcoming election season, that this is happening appropriately. Um, in the legislation, it called on DHS, DNR, ID, uh, ES, and IDFPR to also implement this. I think we need to hear from those agencies as well on um, how that's going, and it should be a part of our investigation. Um, with that, I would like to introduce our colleague from the Senate, uh, Senator McClure. Thank you. I'm Steve McClure. I represent the 50th District right here in Springfield. And all 19 Senate Republicans, we all sent a letter to the Secretary of State. We asked what DMV locations register these individuals, who is responsible, and we need to know what actions are going to be taken to rectify this situation. And we also asked for assurances that this is not going to happen again. I think one of the most disturbing things for me was the fact that the earliest case was in 2018. It's 2020. Not only that, but we had individuals who vote in multiple elections. Very disturbing because once you cast that ballot, that's it. We can't do anything about it after the fact. And there has to be more accountability here and there has to be more actions taken to make sure that our, our elections are legitimate. And so the Senate Republicans are very concerned and we need to see where we go from here. And I want to hand it back to Representative Butler. Just for a few closing thoughts and we'll open up for questions. You know, for me, a path forward on this uh, would mean certainly having a House Exec Executive Committee hearing immediately. Uh, I think the State Board of Elections in conjunction with the Secretary of State's office uh, needs to perform an independent audit of this program uh, to see what they can find through an independent audit. Uh, I think we need to also learn more about the discussions between the Secretary of State and the State Board of Elections when it came to implementation over the last couple of years. Uh, the public needs to know what the communications were, what the issues were, uh, and how come this hasn't been implemented correctly. 
And I think, as Representative Bourne said, I think we need to continue the discussion about a possible suspension of AVR while we're looking at this and while we're trying to see what's going on here. Not, not getting rid of AVR. We support automatic voter registration. In fact, let's not forget, this legislation was signed into law under a Republican governor, Governor Rauner. All of us who are in the General Assembly standing here today at the time in 2017 voted for that piece of legislation. We believe in it, but we believe in it being implemented correctly. And I think that's the most important thing here. We need to get these answers, uh, these questions answered as soon as possible and move forward uh, in a positive manner. And with that, we will open it up for any questions. Congressman Davis, if you could, um, if a non citizen does vote, it breaks federal law, it leads to deport, uh, deportation. What are you going to do about uh, that? Are you going to push for maybe you know, some kind of stay on that for these people who, you know, they got a voter registration card and some of them, 19, apparently, went to go vote? Yeah, although this process didn't start this week, uh, the solutions and the data gathering did. So what we're doing is waiting for the Secretary of State, the State Board of Elections, and local election officials to get back to us as to who all of these individuals were, what that, you know, how they were impacted by this computer glitch, how they might have been impacted uh, by the process of which they were automatically registered to vote and therefore contacted, and then they did vote. Uh, but we still have some more information to gather. But if there's one single non-citizen that did that is here legally that did cast a vote um, that does that does cause me some concerns and you know I don't know the answer to your question because until we know each individual instance Greg no one's going to be able to tell you how we can assist or or what the next step is but you know that's why we've got to wait for the the SOS and the state board and local election officials to get us all of the information necessary to find out who every one of these individuals who cast a vote that were on the list listed as non-citizens. Um, we find out who they are, where they cast the vote, if they did, and find out what's being done to correct the situation so it doesn't happen but, again. But if they are a non-citizen, I mean, would you uh, support not pursuing deportation orders in that case? Yeah, you know, we've got to, we've got to get the data before we talk about what the next step is, Greg. And, and that's the way we operate. That, and that's the way I, I want the Secretary of State to get us the information as to why these individuals, why these 500 plus individuals were listed as non-citizens but given the chance to vote. And that's the reason why we're standing here today. The state legislators make a great point. You know, let's work at the state level to make sure that we get answers as to why a bill that passed with virtually unanimous bipartisan support, why Illinois, who's had a history of registering voters at our driver's license facilities with the Secretary of State, why we're here today addressing this problem. Let's fix the problems that exist, and then we can deal with the individual situations if we find out that they need help in that extra step. Are you for suspending the program, as Representative Bourne said and Representative Butler alluded to? I'm not sure. Is everybody for suspension? Are you for suspension? Well, I'm going to follow the lead of my, my state representative, folks who actually were here when the bill passed. If they say it's not being implemented as they envision, then I'm going to stand behind whatever request they have. But at the federal level, I'll tell you what Illinois also ought to do. I think the State Board of Elections and the General Assembly during uh, this debate ought to take a look at the 425 million federal dollars in HABA grants that we just passed through Congress. You know, 15 million of that's coming to Illinois. Let's figure out if maybe some of that money needs to be spent making sure we have a better system in place to avoid what we saw happen. And I just uh, talked to Mr. Genesee this morning, who is the yeah. county clerk in your home. Mike was just out in uh, D.C. at a hearing. He said the one person that was on the list of the 16 who voted mm -hmm. is a person he has known personally, who has voted in almost every election since 2008, is definitely a citizen, must have filled out something wrong on the form. Does that, uh, so that means there are now only 15 who might have been uh, non-citizens. Does that mitigate any of this to you? Well, like I said, we need to find out who it is because if it's an, if everyone's like that individual, then there's clearly a problem with the Secretary of State's administrative process and maybe the computer program that's being used. We need answers. And, and frankly, 17 months is too long to get the answers we need. And I, I agree with my state legislators and the folks standing behind me that we ought to take a pause before this program is implemented in other state agencies to ensure that the proper protocols are in place because I know the Secretary of State wants that too. 
They don't uh, want this to happen. That people going to the Secretary of State's office like tomorrow could not register to vote. Is that what you want? I want to make sure that we get it right so we don't have to have, we don't have, to have press conferences like this again to try and address errors. Congressman, do you have a deal? So, so really quick, um, they still could be registered to vote. They just wouldn't automatically be registered to right. vote. So they can come up and they can ask to be registered to vote. The automatic voter registration would be suspended. So this does not take away anybody's rights. This allows them to continue the process. We do not want. The SOS office? Um, I believe so. I believe so. So, um, so uh, you know, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that everyone who is legally allowed to vote has access to a polling place, and that's that's our goal here. We just want to get rid of any possible uh, malfeasance or anything of that sort uh, that that's happened uh, on accident or on purpose. Let me just just add on to that. You know, we've had. We have, we have expanded uh, access to uh, uh, registration to vote greatly here in Illinois. So, and we have we have same day registration in Illinois. So people, you know, there are plenty of avenues for people to register to vote. Uh, you can walk up on the day, you walk in your polling place, and you get registered to vote there. So there's plenty of avenues for people to register to vote. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying across the board, whether somebody did it, um, they were told by an election authority they could vote which you know may take away their some of their responsibility but on the other hand there there are people out there I'm sure that uh, that that have done that I'm not saying in this case Do you answer your question no I don't have a date yet but you'll be one of the first to know now uh, I also wanted to ask you to explain a little more about how this is federal turf and more than just state and local well number one the Capitol building that we're in right now is in the 13th district that I'm proud to represent so I, I like to consider this my turf, too. Um, number two, as the ranking member of the House Administration Committee, the lead Republican on that committee, uh, I have jurisdiction at the federal level uh, on our committee over election issues. And the Democrats in Washington have tried to, what I consider, nationalize some of the election processes. They wanted to implement an automatic voter registration program like this nationwide. And I think today is a good day to remind my colleagues in Washington that we've got to make sure that protocols are in place in states that should be used to programs like this to ensure that it's ready to go before we roll something out that's going to take a federal top-down approach. That bill, H.R. 1, also includes some other provisions that I think many of my constituents would be very interested in. The 622-page bill was run through a committee not necessarily known for being a committee to deal with uh, legislative issues of that magnitude. It's usually been more of an administrative committee, but we've had to actually fight back uh, attempts by the Democrats in Washington to put the first ever taxpayer dollars directly into congressional campaigns, the first ever corporate dollars directly into campaigns under the guise of getting money out of politics. Well, I can tell you the constituents I represent in the 13th District of Illinois and some that live right around this complex, the last thing I think they would tell me is a solution to getting money out of the politi out of politics is to put taxpayer or corporate money directly into congressional and campaigns. The corporate money is only fines, as you continue to call it corporate money, but it's just fines that corporations have to pay for wrongdoing, correct? Um, are they going to use personal money to pay those fines, Bernie, or are they I'm going to use corporate money? Uh, Bernie, is, it, it's, it's is, corporate, not, is corporate money going to be used to pay those fines? The Secretary of State's office says this was all a result of a programming glitch. Are you not accepting that explanation? Well, at, at the end of the day, there's humans that are responsible for programming uh, those systems. And uh, I think we need to take a, a very hard look at that. Um, this system should have been, as I said earlier, there should be a zero failure policy with this, with this program. And it failed. And that has to be on the people that, that designed this program. Yes, it's a, it's a programming glitch, but that should not be diminished. I mean, we, at the end of the day, we need to make sure this is, this is solid. And it's people that program, uh, make those programs. I think it was Roger, 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 and I have checked that 574 people were pushed through the system, and only, I think, 19 of them were actually caught uh, or, or somehow voided out. Uh, in this era of two factor authentication, quantum computing, isn't there some way to check to make sure? Uh, it's a trust system, really, when you say you're a citizen. Isn't there some federal way to improve uh, the identification of who people are when they, when they, and who they say they are? Well, I, I don't necessarily know if there's a federal solution to that, um, but ironically, I was in my hometown of Taylorville today to award a, a second place honor to 
uh, a high school kid, uh, Ben Thompson. Congratulations, Ben, once again. Uh, he developed an app uh, on quantum numbers, so maybe we can have an app challenge to uh, fix this problem and uh, run it through our Congressional High School App Challenge. But look, the federal government's not necessarily always going to be the solution. The bottom line is, let's wait for the Secretary of State's office to get the information on what this computer glitch is, how they're going to fix it. But a lot of times, it's going to take a hearing uh, like my colleagues behind me have asked for to get that done, which is why I'm going to continue to advocate for a congressional listening session. We want to hear from the stakeholders. We want things to be implemented correctly. I want to hear from the State Board of Elections. So gather the information, get us the answers, and then we can come up with whatever solution there may be if one is necessary at the federal level. But until then, um, we're standing strong together to get those answers we need. Rodney, can I ask you, Rodney, uh, on the, uh, to what extent, look, in Illinois, we have the government woefully behind in updating their computer systems. Governor Rauner is trying to do that. Hopefully we make some progress. But to what extent do you get information from other election uh, people around the state, around the nation, to what extent when we have these federal proposals, are we throwing a proposal on the back of a system that just isn't capable of filtering out those who should be let through and those who shouldn't be? Do you, do you have any testimony in your committee as far as other states and to what extent they're capable of uh, filtering this out? Because if we look, I mean, the U.S. Senate or the U.S. House could be decided who controls it by one or two votes. So all of us are impacted, even if it's Illinois or Florida or West Virginia or whatever. No, clearly you're right, Terry. And, and what, you know, one of the reasons why I took Mike Genese, my, my local county clerk, he's a Democrat, I'm a Republican, uh, had a hearing with election vendors, election machine vendors in Washington a week and a half ago. And I invited Mike out because Mike Genese is somebody I grew up with. You know, Mike's somebody who is a Democrat elected official. His job is to run elections fairly in my home county of Christian. And I know, regardless of what party Mike's in, he wants to make sure that everybody gets a chance to vote. He runs that election as fair as possible. So there shouldn't be partisanship when it comes to election, election security, election administration. And, and frankly, we're not standing here today as a partisan event. We're standing here today to get answers. And Part of the reason why I'm here is the federal government has decided through our committee, through our votes in a bipartisan way, to invest $425 million of your tax dollars into going to states to help address election security problems. And what's, we're being discussed, what's being discussed here today is clearly an election security problem. So we have a vested interest in making sure those dollars that we've given to the states and local governments go toward ensuring that, that election security measures are put in place. We are happy to talk about how those dollars are being spent, which is going to be part of this listening session we're going to have. And frankly, we've got to have an opportunity to allow our local election officials and our state officials to spend those dollars wisely. And today is just a first step in making sure that if there's a role for those HAVA dollars to be spent in AVR implementation, We'll sure find out in the next few weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.